Sir? Yeah. Yeah, yes, sir. I, I Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first lab of Design Compiler. Since this is the first lab, uh, I'll be focusing uh, on the uh, very basics of Design Compiler. And I'll invoke Design Compiler. I'll tell you how to get help in the Design Compiler, how to get help from commands and variables. We will look at the library setup in detail. <coughs> we will take a look at the what is inside the library, how to report the information in the library, and so on. Uh, I have a design example uh, which has multiple uh, RTL files in model of. It also contains a memory, so that will be very helpful for understanding how to handle these kind of macros. So, uh, let's start with the very basics. So, this is the uh, structure. Uh, so this is the structure in which we should arrange our files. This is a recommended structure. Obviously, you can follow your structure also, but it should have some logical basis to it. So this structure is something like this. In the RTL directory, you have all the RTL files. So there is a readme which tells what are the changes. Uh, so this is again this uh, example uh, design is from Synopsis. So we use this in our lab. Then uh, the folder uh, models contains the library. Uh, we will look in, into all these libraries in detail. Then uh, there is a script which contains the DC script for your design which you would use for synthesis. Then uh, work is the folder in which you would start working, start invoking decision and do a lot of work. Then output is the one in which we would store the output from the design compiler. So, what is the output of the design compiler? It's the method. Okay. The, uh, the most logical output from the design compiler is method. You could always also write out the constraint files, whatever you apply. So, we would uh, uh, redirect all the outputs to this directory. Uh, there is one more folder input which has the uh, one more uh, SBC. So, uh, so now uh, I would uh, for this session I would uh, not source any any script file. I would actually uh, write out each and every command so that it's very clear how do we go about doing that. So let's let's go to work. I'll just clean up some of these stuff uh, just to start afresh. So, uh, uh, now in this session, uh, the design compiler is already set up. So, you could see uh, the what DC shell points to. So, DC shell points to the place where uh, synopsis design compiler suit is installed. So, the command is uh, DC shell. Uh, I'll just invoke it. <laughs> now, whatever we enter into DC shell, we can actually redirect to a log by using the T command. So, now whatever we type inside DC shell, uh, the log will be stored in DC dot log. DC by default also writes out command dot log, but it is not that easy to read. Uh, so, you should always make sure to read it. The command dot log contains uh, the log plus a lot of extra things. So, to get a simpler log out of DC shell, uh, this is the best way. Now, uh, when DC starts, it will usually uh, list down the various uh, licenses and various features. So, these are various licenses and various uh, feature names. So, what we would be using is either DC Ultra and uh, DC Expert. So, the compile command belongs to the feature DC Expert, <laughs> compile Ultra command belongs to the feature DC Ultra. SDL compiler is the one that reads in your log files and 
analyzes them. Again, DFT compiler is used for scan. Design there is a is a suite of design uh, some pre-made IPs from Synopsis like Adders, Microsoft, etc. Library compiler is the is a feature that will parse your library files. Power compiler, as the name suggests, will be used for power. Forget about DFT compiler for now. Uh, and program manager, you need to worry about those. So uh, it looks like compile ultra license is enabled. So we would be using compile ultra. If you have compile ultra, please use it. If you don't, then use compile. So compile ultra is much more advanced than evolved form of compile. So I would recommend using it whenever it's available. This is the version. So if you are using, if you are working uh, for prior synthesis for your lab and all, you don't need to worry about the version. When you work in an industry, you should be very sure which version you will be using because some of the versions will contain some bugs. Synopsis my to fix them, so we should be more clear about what the version is. And make sure that all the designs of the chip are synthesized with the same version. Avoid any pitfalls. Now, uh, in DC shell, <laughs> this is a tickle command mode. I am not uh, going over GUI mode. Uh, you are always free to uh, experiment with it, uh, but I find text is a lot more powerful than GUI mode. Uh, the reporting is a lot more intuitive here. So I would focus on the, on the text based interface as it is very popular in the industry. Uh, but please feel free to explore the, uh, the GUI mode as for design reason. Uh, whatever, I mean, uh, I can only say that you are not missing anything by going with VM, by not going with UI mode. So all the all the features are contained uh, inside the text based mode. GUI is just uh, it will just show you some uh, block diagrams of some circuits which will be useful in some very simple cases. Otherwise, the text based interface is, uh, is quite sufficient. So uh, when you type help here, you would get a list of all the commands. So this is. Uh, a list of commands that is available to you in type this way. So now, uh, if you let's say want to see what are the commands uh, that can work on libraries, you could do something like this. So this will tell you the list of commands that contain the uh, like a lib. So I would let's say I want to know what is what are the reporting commands. So I can say report start. So it tells me these are the reporting commands available to me. Uh, so, uh, as you see, there are a lot of commands. Uh, we'll go over the most popular one and always uh, for anything you want to do, set it for the documentation. Uh, now, it's each command uh, has two types of help available. So, let's say uh, I use a command called, uh, let me choose a simpler uh, command called, let's say, define design list. Now, define design list, so uh, the tab works very well, so uh, it will auto complete the command for you. So, define design list, uh, you could do a minus help on the command. So, minus help uh, tells us that uh, what are the options available. So what it means is that define design list, a small summary, it is SDL define design list. The option available is minus part and minus part directory. So uh, this tells us that so this tells us that uh, these options are available. Uh, so uh, the library name uh, is the logical name, uh, and minus pass will be pointed to a specific directory path on your uh, in your directory. So you could for an extensive help, you could do something like this. You can say man is a manual part of a manual. Man define design list. Now this is a much more descriptive help on a particular command. So what it tells us is that this define design list command 
maps a design library to a unique directory. So design library is a logical name, unique directory is a physical path. So uh, every command is a return statement. So this is the syntax. It tells us what the arguments are, and it gives a description. It also lists down some examples, and it tells you what all commands are related to this command. It is clear from this command defined design list that it is related to analyze and elaborate. Now, uh, let us look at the, uh, the libraries first. So, we will go out of this. Okay, now let us see the libraries first. So, libraries are stored into the directory models. Uh, let us see what is there. Now, there are two. Uh, let us first focus on the standard cell library. So, this is the standard cell library uh, SAED. Uh, this is from Synopsis. Uh, and uh, now, it has, uh, if you notice that it has uh, three. C is .lib file and C dot db file. So the .lib file is a text readable format. Each of these corresponds to one particular operating condition. So FF one C one six V in my forty means this belongs to a fast corner. Fast 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 means fast V mark fast M mark. One point one six volts is the voltage. Minus 40 C n is for negative minus 40 C is the temperature. So this is the fast case, fast corner, or the best case corner. This is the slow corner. SS means slow, 0.95 volt. So again, you see that uh, there are two extremes here: lowest voltage to highest voltage. This is a typical corner. So the the typical corner will be the Operating voltage and operating temperature at which our chip is supposed to operate, and the other design corners are the margins for which we should make sure that our design will work. So typically, the voltage is 1.05. It can go so the range of the chip for which we are, uh, which we will qualify the chip, will be from 1.16 to 0.95 volt. So, what is the worst corner? Worst corner is when the devices are slow, that means NMOS and PMOS is slow, SS. When the voltage is lower, it mostly in most of the cases it will be minus 10 percent of VDD. VDD here is 1.05 volt. So, there is, there is some margin. So, 0.95 is the lower side, the device will be slower and high temperature. Temperature is 125. Here, the typical temperature is 25. Right. So, TT means typical. So, these are three corners. One is this is the best case corner, this is the worst case corner, this is the typical corner. As I stressed a lot of times before, that synthesis has to be done at the worst case corner, at this corner. If you compare any cell, so both these are will be exactly the same in terms of the number of cells, the cell functionality, and all that. The only thing that changes is the timing numbers and the power number. So you could actually see compare both of these batteries, pick up one cell each, and you would notice that the slow corner has more delays than the fast corner. We will see uh, so synthesis will use the slow corner, the worst case corner, and we will see what is the use of the fast corner and the typical corner. We'll see later. It will come in minus five. Right? But for for this uh, lab, we will keep using the worst case corner, that is the slow corner. The db dot dbs are written from DC shell again. These are the binary versions. So, design compiler it is can read dot dot lib, but it is preferable to give it a dot db. The processing becomes much more faster. That is why uh, we prepare these lib files. We read in and write out the db files before even starting the This uh, is a very simple command called write lib. You could read lib and write lib. That will do the job for you. Uh, so, I have already written out the DB so that we can use directly. There is one more uh, file, uh, there is one more library <laughs> which is for the memory. So, you have a lib and a DB as very similar to the standard cell. 
-hmm. Now, let's see what is inside the list. Uh, we have seen some examples in the uh, in the lecture slide, but let's see, uh, we will look at it. It will be much more interesting now. So, uh, so this is the library name. This is the library name. The first few lines tell the tell the they set some define some variables. Important here is technology schema, delay model, stable lookup. What is stable lookup? Stable lookup is non-linear delay model. So non-linear schema delay model is represented by a stable lookup schema. Uh, it also has the time units. Um, uh, the power the library defines all the units. Then uh, it will define some threshold values. So these are the threshold values uh, used for calculating rise rise time for time 2080. So uh, we can we know from here that the uh, limits for calculating uh, the transition times and the rise and fall delay are from 0 0.2 VDD to 0 0.8 VDD. Similarly, these th these threshold here, uh, PCT PCT means percentage. These threshold here define that how do we calculate delay from input to output? The delay is calculated by taking the 50 percent of VDD of output minus 50 percent of VDD of input from. So these thresholds define that. There will be some default pin caps, some default loads, and so on. Uh, I will not go through everything. This uh, this defines the nominal voltage. So, the worst case library has a voltage of 0 0.95, temperature of 125, process 0 0.99. Uh, this thing does not matter for this because there is a separate library for each. There will be some wire load uh, defaults. So, now this this part defines the the wire load. There is also something called voltage map that will some voltages. <laughs> So VDD is set to 0.95 here. VFS, which is ground, is set to zero. So these are the bio-load models. These are different bio-load models that are uh, available in this library. Also, there would be uh, a bio-load selection. Uh, yeah, there's a bio-load selection uh, group which tells us that how the the bio-load is selected. So this is automatic area-based bio-load selection. <laughs> 99 foot full day selection. So, uh, this is the wire selection area. And uh, so, now uh, this is the place where operating condition is defined uh, process, voltage, temperature, and three type. And now comes the, come the lookup table, the lookup templates. Now, let us see, uh, let us see one cell. So, this is a cell and to x1. So, this is a cell, the area is given, the leakage power is given. Let us uh, not focus on the PG pins for a while, uh, that will come later. This is, uh, I can only tell you that this PG pin and, uh, is used for low power synthesis flow and this is outside the purview of this code. So, this is used in the, in the low power. Plane. Now, what it defines here is the pin. So pin uh, pin is defined. Direction is input. There is there are capacitances available. There are some power numbers here. Uh, similarly, A2 is again a, a second pin, second input pin. Uh, it tells what is the fan out load. If you remember that how the fan out calculation is done, it, it tells the fan out load. And then there, there's a pin called Y, <coughs> which is the output pin, direction output. And function. This is important. This tells what kind of gate it is. It is an AND gate because it's A2 and A1. Now, uh, so there are power numbers and there is the, the timing number. So this is the lookup table. So this is the cell right tells us that with respect to pin A1, when A1 changes, timing sense is positive unit means when A1 will rise, output will rise. When A1 will fall, output will fall. This is called positive unit. Negative unit means when input rises and output falls, if there is an inverse relationship, it is called negative unit. So, this cell rise, there are two indexes here, it uses this table. So, we can see uh, what this table is. Uh, 
you can look at the top. So this is the lookup table is using. Variable one is input based transition. Variable two is output cap. And if you see index one, and index two values, they are both different values, but they are dummy values. So whenever this table is used, the indexes are assigned the proper value. So this is transition value. These are capacitance value. And uh, the values with this this table will tell what is the delay. So for example, this is the delay part when the transition is this and the cap is this. So this is the way you can understand this lookup table how how it is arranged. Uh, so there are different cells. There are a lot of cells here. Uh, each for each the important thing to know is how to see the area numbers. How to see the function? So DC will use the function to map the design. It will use the timing and area parameters to optimize the design. It will use the power number to do some power calculation and power optimization. But we will see that later. But let's focus on area and timing for this uh, these few lab lab sessions. Right? <laughs> so these are let's let's look at one of the uh, sequential cells. Let's look at uh, a scan flop. So this is a flop SDFF. Uh, now the function here is represented slightly differently, as we saw in the slide. It is is it's represented by FF I2 I2 N is clocked on CLK. The next state is this. Uh, so next state depends on the pin called scanable. So if the scanable is low, the D will represent the data pin is represented by D. If the scanable is high. The data pin is uh, uh, scan input. Let's look at the non-scan. This is a simple to understand. <coughs> so non-scan flip-flops are usually DFS, represented by the name DFS. Scan ones are called SDFS. This is a very global kind of naming convention. So here it is clocked on CLK. Next state is D. Clear is represented by RSTB. And here the pins are listed. Go down. This is the pin D. So now D, now an input pin of a combination element does not have any timing parameters. It just has the sign out load. That's it, and some capacitance. However, a D pin will have the timing parameters which are nothing but setup and hold. So this is the setup, and this is the this is the hold. So this is the setup when D is rising, when D is falling. Related pin to CLP, right? So. Uh, the setup rising tells us that uh, the timing is with, is with respect to the clock rising. So this is a positive edge trigger to clock. So these timings are setup rising, hold rising. You could go through it uh, at your at your own pace and see that. Uh, don't worry about the negative values. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's very common to have negative hold values. You could read about it online why the hold values are negative sometimes, but it's common to have them. Now. Uh, Let's go to the pin Q. So this is a pin CLK. Uh, now DC knows from this clock through that this is a clock pin of a flip flop. Uh, again, clock does not have any timing parameters. It just has power parameters. This is a reset B pin. Now reset B. Now uh, a reset B, which is asynchronous, will have a recovery removal timing similar to setup and hold. So recovery and removal. Uh, so uh, this is the reset pin, and then we go to the output pin, where the function is IQ, which is again we saw at the top that how the function is represented for this, and then it will have the the timing numbers. Uh, timing numbers are with respect to the clock, uh, rising edge. So cell rise output will have now two things. One is the delay part, other is the transition part. This is the NLDM model, and so this is the this is the delay part. And this is the transition point. Cell rise, rise transition. Cell fall, fall transition. Right. And then uh, there's a timing with respect to the reset point. So uh, now, what does a library have? Let's summarize. Library has a list of cells. For each cell, the function is defined. The input/output pins are defined. Timing is defined. The output pins <laughs> will have the delay and transition numbers, timing numbers. The input pins for combination will have nothing, no timing numbers. For sequential, they will have setup hold timing. Right. 
Now let's go to DC again. And go to DC again. Now how do we start? The first thing we do, we know where our libraries are. We need to specify. We need to tell DC how do how does DC point to the library. So for the first thing, now I talked about commands. There are two things. There are a lot of things called variables. But there are a lot of variables which control the functionality of the time compiler. How do you get a list of variables? You just say a print var. So this is the list of variables and the default value. We uh, see, uh, for example, we could see uh, what is the search path. So the search. This is the search path. This is the default search path. This is the search path points to the current directory and the some directories inside uh, tool synopsis. So the first thing what I I like to do is set the search path. I usually set the search path to where my RTL is and to where the libraries are. Now what I did here is I set the search path to I appended some things to it. I appended current directory in a way solid present. I appended models and the RTL. This is the first thing I did. I set the search path. I'll tell you how it, how it is useful. Now since I've included models and RTL, if I read the RTL file now, I don't have to give the complete path. Since the this is included inside search path, so DC will search for it inside the directory listed in the search path, and it will automatically find it. Second thing I do is that I set the link library. Now this link library. Is uh, we set the link library to star. Star means already loaded memory designs in memory. This is uh, you can read about link library by reading the man page. But this means that link library is the list of libraries that will be used to link the design at all point of time. That means even before synthesis, after synthesis, always. So link libraries should have a list of all the libraries. And all the designs in the memory. The star represents the designs in the memory. This tells us what is, what are the other other libraries available. So what we have available is the worst case library for standard cells and some library for memory. Here I do not have a worst case library for memory, so I'm using the typical. Uh, it is okay to have this for trials, but uh, whenever you are working on real projects, please make sure that all the cells. Memory standard cells, all analog macros should have the worst case library library available for synthesis. Now I set the link library uh, to know what is the link library set to. I can do an echo echo dollar link library, or I could even do a print var on this. So this tells me that link library is set to this. Uh, then, <laughs> what I do is next I set the target library. Now, uh, target library is a set of libraries which can be used by DC to map your design. Please, you you it's very important to understand the difference between target and link. Link is a superset; it contains all the libraries. Target contains only those libraries that DC should use for mapping. Now, what does DC use for mapping? It uses the standard cell libraries. It does not use memory libraries for mapping. A memory is a hand instantiated cell. That means, if you want to use a memory, you should instantiate it in your design. You should use it directly in your design. There is no way DC can map a complex logic to memory. That is why a target library will contain should contain mostly the standard cell library. Right now, now we have set all the libraries. Now, what we could do is, uh, let me see. Okay. Now, till this point, only the libraries are set. The libraries are not ready yet. When the libraries will be ready? When we read in the design. So till now, it's only DC is only preparing stuff for you. It's the you have only set the lab with the, some variables, but nothing has happened yet. No reading has been done. 
Now uh, we we define some uh, design level part. Uh, the command we were seeing earlier. So I defined a design level which tells DC that <laughs> in the current directory, in the physical directory work, is your work directory. Now every time DC reads a, uh, an RTL file, it will create some intermediate files. Those will go into this. Now as soon as we do this, we see that. Uh, as uh, when we read in the first uh, library RTL file, we will see what happens. Now let us uh, read the first RTL file. So I am reading just a part of this one file from the complete design, I am not reading the complete design. We will start slowly, we will build this up, we will read the complete design later. Now what I do is I will just read in one RTL file. This is the command analyze minus format very long. So you could either use analyze elaborate or read file. I am using analyze elaborate, it is much more intuitive. So, uh, analyze minus format dialog and I tell minus library work. Now, here I map the library work to the physical directory, which is also called work, and I read in this file. Now, please note I have not given the full path for instruction decoder. Now, as soon as I give this, DC will launch the press to the compiler, which is the, uh, the feature. That is it is searching for instruction decoder in the list of directories given in the search path. It found it. The compilation is completed. So this is only a syntax check. Now at this point, DC loads the library. It reads the library given in the link path. Now I can do some commands. I can use some commands. To see what the libraries are loaded. Let's let's do let's do some reporting now. We'll elaborate this first and see what happens. Now, assuming that this instruction decoder is my top level design, I will elaborate it. So you typically will only like to elaborate from the top. So let's say you read in 10 RTL files, you would give in the elaborate you will give the design name, the module name of the topmost block. Here since it is only one RTL file, I will just give the name of the, so I will open this, I will show you what the RTL is. This is the RTL, uh, this is the module, this is some kind of instruction decoder. Uh, the uh, comments on the top also tell what is the, what is, what does this block do. This is some instruction decoder, it has a clock, it has a reset, it has some inputs, some outputs. Uh, it is it is simply it has some instruction bus and it will give out the enable signal. This is an instruction for a let's say for a mini CPU kind of problem. So uh, so this is the RTL here. Uh, I see that there is okay one always block. There will be a list of registers here. And uh, so the module name is called instruction decoder. So I will just uh, give the elaborate command. Now what happens? Now uh, the earlier the analyze command, it just takes the syntax of the RTA file. It did not do anything else. Elaborate command will now run a lot of rules here. It will now try and map the design to the JTEC components. That is what elaborate does. Please go, uh, go back and read about elaborate. That is what elaborate is trying to do. It will try and map your RTL design the detail components to the technology independent library that is not to happen. So, it will do all kind of inferences. What it tells us that this there was a knowledge law, it tells us that it is inferred memory devices in process. In routine instruction decoder, line some it gives the line number in this file. Routine is the module name, file name is given, and now it tells us that it found so many registers. So we saw one always block, it is reporting with respect to that. The width it tells us the width of the register, it tells whether it is bus or not, the width is more than one, the bus is yes, otherwise it is no. It tells us whether it has asynchronous reset, asynchronous set, set reset, or synchronous set or synchronous reset. Now let us go back and look at the RTL again. Now it will append underscore reg to each one of the names. So let us look at the instruction. This let us look at this. So 
in straight is a register. Um, <coughs> some there are some buyers which work on this based on the value. Then it is assigned to some uh, some buyers, and then the register itself is this. So we see this uh, that there is a uh, this always log. We see that uh, it has a synchronous reset back because it is not in consecutive periods. If you notice, then uh, the if command is the first one. If what happens on reset? So there is a pragma also synopsis sync set reset reset. You could try removing this and see what happens. Uh, usually it should work fine uh, because this the coding style is good. So DC should remain as a synchronous reset block, synchronous reset block. And then there is some functionality on. So now this. Uh, so for each of the registers that you work on, it is good to see. For each of the article file, it is good to see the elaboration report at least for the first time. It it gives you a lot of. So if your register is not appearing here, there is something wrong. Maybe it appears as a latch, which you did not intend to do it. Maybe you targeted it to be a flip flop, but it became a combination logic because of coding mistake. So a lot of info is in the elaborate time. Now at this point. The design is not the G tech. Is it possible to see? Yes, it is possible. Uh, what we could do, we could use a write command. We can say write minus f format. We can say very log and minus output. We let's say I say G tech dot B. So it it wrote something. Let's see what it wrote. So this is this write command is the one that is used to write out the network. Now uh, please note, please remember that the synthesis has not been done. We haven't issued any compiler compiler. Right? Come on, now let's see this. what kind of necklace that we get. What we get here is a basic necklace. So we look at the sequence set gen block. This is the generic sequential element. So you could see that you could compare it with the block diagram given in the, in the lecture slides. Uh, so and then there will be a host of so there are a lot of flops at first all the flops are listed all the sections are listed and then there there are some gtech components gtech mod gtech or and so on right so this is the gtech netlist <coughs> how is it used is, is gtech netlist useful there is no optimization that has taken place as of now because there is no synthesis that has been done the use of gtech netlist is that Let's say uh, you want to deliver your code to some third party, and you do not want them to see your RTM. What is that? You could always give them a JTAG image, and if they are using the same tools in Office Design Compiler, they can use this to plug it in their design. They can use your 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 code in the JTAG form and use it in the design. Use it for synthesis. So this way, your code is protected. They cannot read it, and they can also go ahead and synthesize. So this is one of the uses of uh, now. Let's lose uh, the now. Uh, I won't go into compile into this in this lecture. We will focus on the compile command in the next lecture on the compiling lecture. Let's focus on some of the reporting. So till now we see that how do we set the libraries using link path target uh, using uh, these these commands link uh, search path link library target library define. Now let's see that what what effect did design define design has had. So it created a directory called work. Inside work, what is there? Inside work, there are few binary files which belong. So we read a module called instruction decoder. So these are the intermediate files that Synopsys generates, design compiler generates for. It is not used by us, but it is used entirely by the tool. Do not worry about that, but it is a good practice to create a work directory and link it to the logical directory work. Uh, whenever you are working, otherwise what you do is you dump a lot of files in the present working directory, which you do not want. You want this particular area to contain your log files only. So it's a good thing to create a separate directory and point design compiler to that one for writing out these intermediate files. Now, uh, so we uh, we saw how to set the link library, target library. We saw define design list. We saw how to read a single RTL file and What does elaborate command tell us? Right. Now I'll uh, show you a couple of uh, reporting commands uh, that are very useful for library. So first command is list underscore library, list underscore libs. 
that tells us uh, we see that what are the options there available to us as it nothing it is you can either want a particular library to be listed or you can so this, if you see this command it will give you all the libraries that are available what is what is loaded library name is this this is the file and this is the path so, so standard cell is loaded memory is loaded gtech is loaded gtech is part of the tool it is not something that any technology library that will provide you this is in, this is included in the design compiler tool and standard smdb standard smdb is a list of symbols that are used to show you the block diagram when you use the gui mode now there is one more command called report and now this tells us what what is the library what are libraries are loaded now we can do a reporting so lists will give you a list of things report commands can be used to report on those things so i want a report on the library on the semester library so let's look at the uh, options we have there are so many options available here <laughs> so for, what does the library contain it contains cells functions timing power <coughs> knowledge data a lot of data it contains a lot of data so this report command In, so one thing is you can either open up in a text editor and see, or design compiler also gives you a summary report. So I, I what I do is I just do a so a square brace here tells that the, these options are option. You could you could uh, and this is library name is without the square brace, so that, that means this argument is composite. So I just give one one argument. I just say report underscore list. And I do a report on this library. What does it give me? It gives me that this is a technology library, and it has power down pins. It is created by this tool. It created it is created on this date. Whatever library version time unit. It gives it gives us all the unit information. It gives the operating conditions. Forget about input and output voltage for now. It tells us what is the voltage value, some default values. Whatever we saw in the library, it's all here in this report, and it's easier to read a bit compared to the the text file. It gives a list of wired models. <laughs> it also tells that for a particular length, for a particular fan out, what is the length it will use for a particular wired model. So it gives a list of wired models. So these are all the wired models. It, uh, it tells us also about the value of model selection group, and so on. Then uh, it tells us the now here, now there, uh, there was hardly any text. I mean, the, the variable name there was no comment on it. Here, DC will also tell you the comment. So, what does this mean? Delay threshold trip points. So, input threshold. Percentage rise, output threshold percentage rise, and so on. I've already ex explained this. Now uh, it also gives a list. It it gives some legends that now it starts listing the components. That is the cells. And before listing the components, before listing the cells, it tells what kind of cell it is. It's either a black box or a test cell or a scan cell so there are a lot of legends it has level shifter map only so now we see it needs to know <coughs> apart from knowing what whether it's a combination cell or a sequential cell apart from knowing all the stuff it also needs to know some other stuff these this this collection of stuff is called attributes so each particular cell has an attribute associated with it for example Uh, let's let's look at few examples here. Now, for example, take a simple AND cell. Now, it doesn't have any attribute. It's a simple combination cell. But look at an antenna, at an antenna cell. This antenna cell is a B. That means it's a black box. So the legend tells us that B means it's a black box. D means to don't touch. And U means to don't use. What does B mean? This means that antenna is some kind of special cell. D black box means 
DC does not know the functionality of it. Why? Because there is no function attribute to You could go back to the library, you can open the text file, list file, and see for yourself whether it's an antenna. There will not be any function attribute. Now, antenna cells are typically uh, they are very special cells which do not have any functionality, but which are used to uh, correct some problems in the layout. Now, a standard cell library contains all kinds of things. It contains all the combinations, sequence cells, special cells, such as like antenna. But antenna should, should it be used in synthesis? No. It is a cell that is that might be used by the layout engineer to resolve some problems, which are very specific to layout. It has no functionality. But it still is a part of the standard battery because the same battery is used by all. It is used by the synthesis guy, it is used by the timing analysis guy, it is used by the back end. So, the library is common and these attributes are a way to tell the tool that this set should be used or not used. So, so just because first thing it is set to black box, second thing it says set to you which means do not use, you means that do not ever use this cell, do not ever input this cell. So, <laughs> DC will not use this cell to do anything. So, even if let us say function was defined, then it would not have been a black box, but if you set a do not touch, sorry, if you set a do not use, then DC will not input that cell at all. Do not touch means that if this cell is already present in the in the in the design. So this cell could be present in the back end in the, the post layout method, right? Because the layout is in a minor use. If this is present, then don't touch it. Many people they like to instantiate some technology dependent cells in their RTM. You see the examples in design also. And they want DC not to remove them. They want to tell DC that I have placed this cell and please do not touch it, do not remove it. So that is represented by don't touch. Don't touch tells DC that do not play around, do not modify anything related to this cell. Don't use cells, do not ever use this cell. So now there are, uh, for example, there is a cell called AO of X1, right? The functionality is known, it is not seen, but we are telling that <laughs> do not touch it, do not use it. What does AO mean? Uh, AO means uh, AO means it's an always on cell. It's an always on cell. Fine, uh, always on is an attribute used for power on it. But so for each cell, there are some attributes defined, right? Uh, so here, for example, ISO cell tells us it's an isolation cell. So all all special cells which have some special functionality. Which are might be used for voltage domain dropping, might be used for solving DRC problems in layout. All these cells should be do not use and do not touch in the, in the library. If the cell is not, if let us say the library card missed something, you could always do, give commands and DC to accomplish that, but uh, usually it is a good practice that it comes from the library. So, uh, S I guess means sequential cell because all the latches are. Uh, Attributed as S, so there are so this is a S, this is a redemption kind of a cell. So there are lot of lot of special kind of cells. This cell, this is a scan cell, scan type of a cell, and so on. So the port layer will give you everything. I think there is also a summary. Is there a summary of it? So let us see what all. Uh, now, report list did not give any uh, any timing information. It <laughs> by default, it will just throw out list of pilot models, the variable setting, and the list of cells and the activity. You could also see the uh, timing data. Uh, it will be a big report. You could see minus. Uh, Minus timing, for example. So, so it will also list out the timing data. 
So here it started dumping out the lookup tables and to see it started dumping out the index in the value. So this is just a, again a different sort of a view for the library. So it is just dumping out the data from the dot list. Right. So uh, So, uh, so report list and list list is a, is a very useful uh, commands to uh, know about, know more about library instead of going and opening them in a text editor. These uh, reporting commands are much more useful. Uh, now, so we read in the article, we read in one file. So DC will, uh, we elaborated that. So DC will set, uh, by default, it will set the current design to be whatever design we elaborated. So by default current design is set to whatever we elaborated we since we elaborated instruction decoder DC uh, set uh, this to instruction decoder. Right. Now uh, if you want you can just give a compile command simply and see what happens let us let us uh, let us see. So what I will do I will just give a compile command. Uh, I have not defined anything. I have not defined any timing constraints. I have not defined any Area constraints, I haven't defined any environment constraints, but still let's see what happens if I give compile ultra. Now what what it does <coughs> is that compile ultra, since it's the first time we are running compile, it will load up the uh standard cell library and it will do some analysis. So it will say analyzing this and uh, so it, it takes some amount of time. The the bigger the library is the longer it takes. So what I will do is, uh, yeah. so meanwhile it will, uh, I will I'll go over the commands and see. Uh, there is. Now uh, we, we, we elaborated one article file, now what happens, what, what if you want to read the complete design, whatever all the article files. So you could do it in this way, you could say analyze my primary work, I have found a of it and then in the curly braces, you can specify all the RTL files. This is a list of all the RTL files. Uh, the backslash is for uh, escaping the new line, so uh, so that it's much more readable. And let's see if it's done. It will take some amount of time. <laughs> so what I'll do is uh, let's look at the uh, the compile commands in more detail uh, in the next lecture. So for this lecture, please focus on. You could go back uh, to your DC shell. You open up the DC shell, play with these commands: search path, link library, target library. Uh, read in, uh, write on, write, write a small sample RTL code uh, using the lecture slides of RTL coding. You can uh, try and write in, write out, uh, write a small FSM for example, or use the FSM code from the lecture slide. And read that in design compiler, look at the elaborate report. So, the focus of this lab was to make you uh, comfortable with library and the elaborate report. So, please focus on the elaborate report, uh, read in different kind of RTL file, see what the elaborate report contains. Uh, I will focus on the compile command of this design. We will we'll talk about the design constraints, the model constraints, how to set them, and then how to synthesize the design. Thank you.